Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus, and I'm going to give you the latest updates on what's going on in the Thanksgiving snowstorm. we got some big changes coming, as well as our Arctic air it has gotten colder and going further to the south in the U.S., especially the wind chills. Now, we still have our severe weather that is going on for today. We still have chances for tornadoes, damaging winds, and we still have that snow coming out through the northeast. So I'm going to show you what's next on the pattern in our next snowstorm, which is Thanksgiving week. So you know the latest updates. Never been here before. Make sure you subscribe. I am all year long. All timestamps are always in the description to help save you time. Now, yesterday we did have five tornado reports. We had four around Jackson, and we had one in Louisiana that did do some structural damage. And for today, you do have a chance for tornadoes. Still, it has grown with your 5% area, and you have the 2% area. So here's your cities and states at at risk for the tornado threat for today with the 5% being the strongest. You also got chances for damage and winds. It's showing just a 5%, but I'm still showing it's going all the way up towards northeast. So here's your cities and states so far for the damage and winds as it comes through. And you see National Weather Service says a few tornadoes and isolated damage and gusts are possible today across southern Alabama, southwestern Georgia, and parts of the Florida Panhandle. Isolated damage and gusts are possible along with a marginal tornado threat from there northeastward to the coastal Carolinas. It even changed for tomorrow with your chances for tornadoes as these storms train and move further towards the coast and start leaving. So for tomorrow, for Wednesday, here's your cities and states at risk for your chances for tornadoes. National Weather Service says isolated severe thunderstorms are possible Wednesday morning across eastern North Carolina and the Outer Banks. Locally damaging gusts and a brief tornado are possible, guys. Now, we'll go to WSV3 so you can see a little bit better, but you see right here as you get that banding all day long. This is all the way by 7 o'clock tonight. These storms are going to be all day. You are getting a transition of that snow in the northeast, but that band is going all the way all night long. And for tomorrow morning, reaching the coastline of the Carolinas as well. That's why you have that threat until that pushes away. But it's going to be an all-day affair. It's not going to be the whole area, but this line of storms is going to train for hours and slowly push to the east while you get this big glob of rain moving through the northeast, bringing you all that snowfall. Latest on the damage and wind gust from a triple R is showing it's going to go from 40 to 50, even get towards 60 and 70 and higher elevations, but definitely seeing some 40 and 50, high 50s in there. All that red is 60, guys, and stronger as it pushes offshore and showing maybe it'd be really strong over here by Boston, getting 60 and getting all that 70 in the Gulf of Maine. But you do see for today, you have some 60 dew points, and it is going all night long, all the way across the southeast and the mid-Atlantic. And overnight, it's going to stretch into Virginia, going to southern Maryland, southern Delaware as well, starting into some probably low 60s. But then for tomorrow morning, it's just going to be for the coast of the Carolinas. And that's where your lift is as well. You can see for your cape, for your lift for today, that's going to go all afternoon long right here for the southern half of Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, going in towards Georgia, and a little bit for up state South Carolina. Then as you go towards tonight, then it's going to be for the coast of South Carolina, the coast of North Carolina, and this little region right here all the way until tomorrow when that pushes off. But you still got it also for southern Georgia and the panhandle of Florida as all that keeps moving to the east. So our latest information on our significant tornado perimeters show that it will be chances for tornadoes for southern Alabama, Panhandle, Florida, even over here, maybe towards Atlanta, guys, as you go towards 1 and 3 o'clock today. In that region, chances for some rotating thunderstorms that has some strong dew points, some strong wind shear, and it could be a potential chance for a tornado. Mostly it's going to be down here for southern Alabama, the panhandle of Florida. You see how it spreads out after that, and it's very light amounts. I think it's going to turn into a damaging wind event after it goes by southern Alabama and panhandle of Florida. Showing the hail threat is not that big at all. Very weak signatures, guys. Damaging winds and some heavy rainfall coming. And it's Tuesday, guys. Look, we have our new drought map. You see you have some drought over here for eastern Nebraska, eastern Iowa, New Mexico has some drought, southeastern Arizona, a little bit of northwestern Washington. It's a little hit and miss, but the main area, you can see how it has grown now. All the way from southeastern Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi has grown into northern Mississippi with that exceptional drought, going into a lot of Tennessee, Alabama, northern and southern, northern Georgia, even upstate South Carolina and western North Carolina. You even got it over here towards Tampa, towards western Florida. 
But this area right here is where we're about to get all this rainfall. We've been having it all night long. And the rest of this is coming for this region. So hopefully we will knock this down. But you see how it has gotten a lot worse. So trying to spread a little bit of good news. You already got some rainfall, which is a good thing. It wasn't a bunch, but it, you take anything you can get at this point. And for the rest of this, all the way with National Weather Service model, all the way until Friday morning is going to be along the Gulf Coast and for the eastern side of the U.S. Now it is getting heavier all the way from the Carolinas all the way towards northeast and you do have that flash flooding risk as well. This is bringing you some rainfall and some snow in the higher elevations of the northeast. So for today you do have a marginal for flash flooding guys all the way from the Panhandle of Florida through southern Alabama going into Georgia as well going across upstate South Carolina, eastern Tennessee, western North Carolina as well, and going through West Virginia, going through Virginia, a little bit of southern Maryland, southern Delaware, and southern New Jersey. Give it a marginal for flash flooding for today. So let's talk snow. First, the snow in the northeast, National Weather Service model. You see it is pretty accurate, but it's showing you got a little bit for Pennsylvania. This is where you're going to get that transformation where you're going to have rain, freezing rain, and snow. And you see it's for the higher elevations of the New England states, for northern New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, a little bit of Massachusetts, and for Maine. Anytime from tonight all the way until tomorrow morning and tomorrow night. Now the Ural sees that as well as you go through tonight. Even heavier as you go through tomorrow morning and tomorrow night. Really heavy going across Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Potential foot. A lot of precipitation coming through. And bringing a lot of snow. Look at this. Showing it'll be over a foot for Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, even northern New York. A lot of snowfall coming. Definitely major snow. But still showing there's still that transition. Still showing there's that freezing rain. Now this will cause power outages once it starts adding up on your power lines. It will weigh it down and cause problems. Plus, you can see the update on the Arctic Oscillation. Not only are we going to this cold dip, guys, as soon as we go into Thanksgiving and the end of November and the beginning of December, still showing it's going to be a long-lasting blast and potentially warming up as we go past our first week in December. And you can see the temperature battle when you look at your tropopause way up by your jet stream. Now, all that green is actually some very cold temperatures moving through. You can feel it today, that's for sure. But look at all this dark blue, all these very cold Arctic temperatures that's going to start moving through. At the same time, we got some storms moving through, bringing potential snow. Now, this is going to start bringing in first on Thanksgiving on the 23rd. You're going to start coming in through the northwest, bringing that cold air with that potential snowstorm that's going to be really heavy, definitely for the Rocky Mountains. But as you go through the Central Plains, your temperatures are going to change and be a little bit above average, a little bit warmer as that transition goes across. Still showing there's going to be a light amounts, guys. And as it goes out through the Northeast, potentially bringing more snow for y'all as well. But these cold temperatures are here to stay. You're going to see up to 10 days with the Euro. Now, you don't want to go past 10 days anyway because it does change, at least when you're trying to be exact and accurate as you can. But it's been trending for so long that this cold air is coming. Now, you can see with the Euro, as you go through the 23rd of Thanksgiving and on, we have this cold air coming through. This is your temperatures. Your wind chills are going to be worse. And maybe being really deep as we go towards the end of November and the beginning of December. Remember, we're going to be even deeper for December, guys, at least the beginning of it. So showing you the difference, here you are with the temperatures on the 30th with the Euro. Waking up with a lot of 20s going on. And you can see with the wind chills, very cold air coming in. Matter of fact, I'm showing it's even colder. Now, I don't want to show you too far past this because this is already at nine days. I'm trying to be as accurate as possible. But I want to show you it is trending, guys. Now, as you look with GFS on the very same shot on the 30th, taking it even deeper into the U.S. with some 20s now going to the south. With the wind chills, even further south. Now it's bringing in those single-digit feels like temperatures. And if you think this is crazy just because it's GFS, remember, trends is your friend. And when you look at the Canadian, the temperatures look worse than the wind chills on the GFS. And when you look at the wind chills with the Canadian, it's even worse, guys. So I'm not saying this bad is coming in, but it is trending that very cold air is coming in, and it is trending that it is going south into the U.S. and Mexico. So please be aware we have some very cold air coming in, some very big changes coming soon. 
So just looking for the next seven days of rainfall. You can see it's starting to add up more for the south, something coming in from the Gulf in this pattern. We see how it's adding up towards the northeast and the New England states. And you have your chance for your snowfall as the snow comes in. So this precipitation isn't all going to be snow, but you can see it does transition towards snowfall. Very heavy for New England and northeast. Very heavy over here for the Rocky Mountains and higher elevations. Four corners, a little bit of Utah getting in on that, and you get it for the Central Plains. Then it lightens up as it goes across still. And you can see the latest update that as it gets at very cold temperatures, you get all that snow. But as far as the Central Plains and moving further towards the east, you see right there the freezing line. And as that moves further towards the east, some get snow, some get rain, but then it lightens up. So your amount of snowfall from there is going to be a light amount and be even lighter as it transitions towards the northeast. Not a lot of snow coming with that. Then you got another little trough coming through, a little clipper from Canada. So just talking right here for the Central Plains, trying to explain to y'all why y'all not getting none. Like over here for Illinois, Ohio Valley, Iowa, all y'all, even up in Minnesota, you get a very light amount. It is bringing a lot of heavy snow to a lot of people, but you can see your temperatures. So as you go through the day, you got these very warm temperatures that are really adding up and it's stopping it from freezing. So you got the very cold temperatures coming through as you go through the 25th and it comes through very warm. It has high 30s so far. Now, if everything slows down, maybe it can catch up. But the trend has been this for a long time that your temperatures just are not going to be there for the Central Plains, going through the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. You can see the same thing with GFS. It's trending that you're going to be a lot of snow over here for Idaho, Western Montana, Wyoming, Utah, maybe even Nevada, Colorado, a little bit for the Four Corners, and it's coming through Nebraska, Kansas. I mean, everybody's getting a little bit in the gray, one, maybe two possible. But all this blue is all three to five. The pink goes seven and more. But you see it is trending, even with the Canadian. It takes it a little bit deeper, but it's trending that this is going to be very cold air, bringing y'all all this snow. But then it's going to transition over lightly and then maybe heavy again in the northeast. All right, so let's take a little bit closer look at these storms. Let's start around. I will go northern in a second. Let's start with the south first. But as you see the banding going through all the way to 11 o'clock this morning, you're going to have it going through Montgomery as well. And as it goes towards Atlanta, it's going to go towards northern Georgia as you go around 2 and 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Remember, this is central time up here for me guys so it is going to be different for y'all for the east coast as this goes towards upstate south carolina around five o'clock gets around macon georgia around five o'clock and goes towards southern georgia as you go later around nine and ten o'clock and that moves from upstate south carolina all the way towards columbia as you go towards 10 o'clock and then it goes from charlotte north carolina towards raleigh as you go overnight into two o'clock in the morning then you got these storms that are brewing up all these storms are brewing up right here for overnight into tomorrow morning. This whole region is what you got to watch for as this transitions all morning long. Then you have it going all the way from 7 o'clock all the way till 10 o'clock in the morning. Still hanging around at noon. Then it finally pushes off around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon for North Carolina. These storms are going to hang around for a long time. Plus what we have for the north. So let's go over what y'all have because everybody's going to be in a lot of storms all day long. So we're still moving at 10, 11 o'clock. You got all these storms moving across Ohio, Virginia, the northeast. As you go through 12 and 1 o'clock, you go going through Pittsburgh, really heavy, kind of light on Philadelphia. So this is where it's transitioning in the snow. So you can see as you go all the way to 10, 11 o'clock this morning, you've been having storms in Michigan. You're getting some snow potentially in northern Michigan. But now these storms are coming across Pennsylvania all the way to 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Pittsburgh getting it heavy. Franklin all the way towards Philadelphia. Not as heavy as Pittsburgh, but you're getting it as well. And you're getting all this heavy snow. Syracuse looks like you're getting a little bit of mix. Binghamton, you're getting a lot of heavy snowfall coming with that. And as you go all the way until tomorrow morning, now you're getting it for New England while everybody else is in the storms. And just the higher elevations is going to be getting all this snow for New York, for Vermont, New Hampshire, for Massachusetts, not all the way to Boston, and for Maine. So a lot of the Maine cities, a lot of the bigger cities, 
is not going to see this snowfall. Then we have that next storm coming. So I will keep you updated at all times. Make sure you click that bell so you get my updates. And I hope this has helped you in some way. If it has, please think about others. Please share this information. Let others know what is coming so they can know what the truth is and the latest impacts is. Because we do have this very cold air coming in that people need to get their gardens, get things prepared for as we transition into our winter. Thank you so much for your time. If you like the content I provide, think about to subscribe and hit that bell once again so you can get the updates. You really got to do that. That's very important on YouTube. Now, real quick before you go, if you never heard before, I got some good news for you. Mark 16, 15 through 18. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So if you never heard it before, there is good news. Jesus Christ has come into our world. He has died for our sins. He has won the war already. So all we got to do is just praise him and enjoy the reward of being his loyal servants. There is great news to spread today. God bless all of you that believe. I hope you have a very blessed day today. Remember, all glory always goes to God. Our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I hope he always keeps you safe every single day of your life. You and your families. And forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.